What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. I'm getting ready to go take my son outside to go ride his bike in a few. But I had to just make this video really, really quickly, right? So I saw this tweet on Twitter that said, You're in a sold-out movie theater. Black Panther just ended. The credits start rolling and all the stars goes full blast. Man. Y'all, that hit me in my feels, bro. Like... I remember watching Black Panther in a sold-out movie theater, and when all the stars came on, all of our spirits felt elated. That song does something to me. It made me want to shed tears every time I hear it. Before Chadwick Boseman died, even before he died, when the movie first came out and I heard that song, it made my my spirit feel triumphant. Like, like I don't know. It made me want to cry. I don't like the way the... Stuff that they were saying, I just cry for no reason. That shit, that really felt like that. I don't know. The song feels majestic, triumphant for black people. You know what I mean? And then when, when Chad, Chadwick Boseman passed away, years later, two years later, we hear the part where they say, uh, what do you say? You better live your life. We are running out of time. We running out of time. Like, like And I'm like, bro, the, the song is just super emotional. You know what I mean? And I remember when Black Panther... The first Black Panther first came out, like how black people felt leaving that movie theater. The messages put in that movie by that black man from Oakland, California, Ryan Coogler. Ryan was only 33 years old when he made that film. When they went well, when the film came out, he was 33 years old. He had already done Fruitvale Station, phenomenal, phenomenal. Did Creed already, phenomenal. Then you follow it up with. The first story of Black Panther, the first story of King T'Challa, like a story that a lot, a lot of Marvel fans were already fans of, but a lot of, it was some black people that never even watched, were into comics. But when we saw the movie, you just felt all the messages in it. How we need to end the diaspora wars. The story, I, like Killmonger's story about being a, a person who has roots in Wakanda. He's not really connected to it outside of his father. You know what I mean? And, 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 just the connection to a lot of black folks who were taken from our homeland and we don't have any connection to it anymore. You know what I mean? A lot of black people taken from certain countries in Africa and don't have any connection to it because they, they, you know, our grandparents and grandfathers and all of that and great grandparents and great, great grandparents have been in America for so long. You know what I mean? You don't know where you come from and all of that. You know, those stories within it, even, you know, Killmonger's line at the end of the movie, bury me in the ocean with my ancestors who jumped from the ships because even they knew death was better than bondage. That shit spoke to black souls, bro. You know what I mean? It just, it, it felt good to see like black royalty on TV. Like how, how, how elegant, how, how um royal, how regal. Like Chadwick Boseman moved regally, like everywhere, like just his movements on screen, outside of the screen, how he carried himself. Rest in peace to the legend, man. Um, the way black folks, black women, like black folks look beautiful on that screen, man. And the way they, they carried themselves with such dignity and pride. It was a beautiful moment for us, man. And I will never forget the feelings that I had from it. I remember I made a review. I went straight home. I was still living with my mom at the time. I was like a year out of grad school. I just had came home from Arkansas State. And I remember how I was feeling like, bro, like, man, this is, this movie is just monumental. You know, I never forget the way a lot of y'all anti-black conservatives, anti-black racist conservatives tried to make black folks feel. You tried to, They tried to shit on the movie because they saw black folks were so joyous about it. They really, really did try to just trash the movie because they saw we were elated about it. That's how anti-black racist, that, that's how they act, right? Anytime black folks are extremely joy, joyous, joyful about something, we're celebrating something. We're happy. They try to break it up. We try to shit on the party. Oh, it's really not that good. It's overrated. It's trash. It's this. I mean, they were calling it everything in a book after it came out because they saw black folks so excited about it. You know what I mean? Even trying to go out their way. When we, when we were saying, yo, it's the first black superhero movie with a predominantly black cast. They were trying to pinpoint like like cut out certain words it was not the first black superhero movie. Stop saying it. Stop saying it. Blade is the first stop. Bro, we never said it was the first black superhero movie. And y'all know that we didn't say that. You're just trying to trash the movie. You're trying to trash it. You know what I mean? Because you don't like the way black folks are celebrating this film. The way we coming up to the coming to the movie theater 
and you see people in African garb and dress and stuff like that, and you getting irritated by it because you don't like black folks being excited about something. So you want to trash and just, you know, uh, you know, you want to step on a movie. You know what I mean? Black folks, this is the first, this is a movie with a black superhero, a black lead, a black superhero with a pre predominantly black cast with a black director who was in his early 30s from Oakland, California, who don't code switch, who doesn't, who still talks with his Oakland accent and still professional at the same time. Black man sitting up there like, I got so much respect for Ryan Coogler, bro. I watch his interviews a lot. That man is intelligent, bright young brother that carries himself well, but at the same time stays in touch with his roots. He doesn't try to separate himself from his roots and, and his culture and, and his accent. Even though he's made it to, you know, Hollywood and his, his films have done well. You know what I mean? And, and I respect him so much. But a lot of them anti-black racist conservatives, anti-black conservatives were trying to trash the movie because they saw how excited we were about it. And they saw how joyous we were and how we were pulling messages from the film and all that. And they didn't like it. They didn't like it, especially because... They don't like black folks being excited about something and they couldn't participate in certain conversations. So you want to trash it, you know, that, and that's how they act. It's just on this. It's on it's on brand for a lot of the anti-black conservatives to be like that. You know, and I just saw them trashing it every chance they get got. And then when Chadwick Boseman passed away, they tried to change their tune on the movie. Right. Oh, it's a really great movie. Chadwick did an amazing job. They wasn't saying the same. I saw some of the same counts accounts that trashed the movie. Now trying to big up the movie when Chadwick Boseman passed away. You know what I mean? Like, and I just saw the switch up on a lot of them anti-black conservatives, man. And people were trying to trash the movie because they didn't like the CGI scene. And yeah, it wasn't the best fight scene at the very end with the CGI. And they had to rush and they had to hurry up and get that done. From what I remember hearing, it was like they had to hurry up and rush because something happened, right? But to try to trash the movie based on that fight scene is absolutely garbage. With the great acting, Michael B. Jordan was phenomenal in that movie. As Eric Killmonger, a.k.a. Injadaka. Like, man, that's the simple stuff, man. He had a, his name was something different. His name, he had an African, a Wakanda name, Wakanda name, and then an American name. You know what I mean? And how he's telling, well, I remember when he met Shuri in the movie, she's like, your name is Eric Stevens. He, that's not my name, princess. You hear me? Then he talking in the Zosa, the language. And I know they have clicks and stuff when they say, you know, the word. I'm not probably I'm probably pronouncing the language wrong. Zosa. That's how that, that's, they use that language as the language of the people uh, of Wakanda. You know, and the dedication for Chadwick Boseman to get the accent and the clicks and all that type of stuff right. And, you know, and, and Ryan Coogler, when he's talking about the language and getting the clicks and stuff right, it was just beautiful to see, man. The, the uh, roof. What's her name? Roof. Roof Carter. I believe her name is Ruth Carter. I, I hope I'm I'm hoping I'm saying her name right. The costume design. So brilliant, bro. And again, all the stars just topped it off. Like hearing that song and watching the, the, the you know, in purple. That purple is a regal color, royal color. Watching it starring Chadwick Boseman and Michael B. Jordan and all of that. And it's like, man, I don't know that song. Any little thing about us. That, that, I don't know. Like that song feels like. So triumphant, and, and honestly, it's quite fitting that Kendrick Lamar <laughs> is a part of that song that got black people feeling like elated and triumphant and, and, and feeling like, man, this is something grand for us. You know, a lot of people were so upset that we felt that way about the movie and tried to, oh, it's not about black people. It's not about, they were trying, I mean, they were so pissed off, like trying to um, disingenuously take certain parts of conversations that we were having. It's not the first black superhero. Nobody said it was the first black superhero. We said it's the first black superhero movie with a predominantly black cast and a black director. That's the first time we had ever seen that. And it sold, it did so well in the box office, tremendously well, like outstandingly well. And I was so proud of those, of those black brothers and sisters on that film, man. And um, yeah, I just never... I, I feel what that brother is saying, but I never forget how the anti-black conservatives tried to make black folks feel, try to trash the movie and, 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 and shit on the movie because you were upset that black people were joyous about it. And, you know, coming up with our meanings behind certain things and all of that and, you know, about how we need to stop diaspora wars and, you know, and how black people who have been displaced from Africa feel and don't have any connection to it and showing Killmonger's rage and, you know what I mean? And he was half Wakanda and half American and they didn't take him back. 
maybe due to him, they could they could maintain a lot because he was half American. And it was, man, bro, it was just so crazy and so many important messages. But the anti-black racist conservatives want to trash the movie because of how proud black people were in it. And I'll never forget that.